Welcome back to Forest Firearms, everybody. I'm Ivan, and today we're going to do a combination video. Part one of it is going to be talking about my PPSH-41 build, and the second part is going to be talking about Soviet small arms. So what most of you guys are here for is the PPSH-41 parts kit build. Yeah, it looks a little ugly, a um, little uglier than you'd seen it last, because I ended up doing some welds on it. They ended up failing, so I ended up having to redo them, but... I believe that they're deep enough now, and I decided before I finish the top, because I'm going to have to do some moving and bending with it in a little bit, I might as well focus on the trigger pack. I got it um, all figured out. I contacted Red, White, and Blue Buck Slayer there on YouTube, and I got all the information I needed that I to make this legal, and as you guys can see, it's striker fire. So for the most part, it's almost there. Next week, I'm going to be having my 16-inch barrel coming out. And yes, it's going to look like an anteater. It's going to have a big barrel sticking out for a while. The plan is to SBR this. But for now, yeah, it's going to have that stupid long barrel sticking out. But for the most part, it's almost there. I'd show you guys the insides. They're not quite finished yet, and I'm not quite sure how the whole YouTube rules work. So I'm just going to... Mm, I think I'm going to shy away from it on, on this video. But from what you guys can see... It is striker fired, and uh, we're almost there. So that's pretty exciting. So when I was getting ready for this video, I ended up seeing my other Soviet style weapons here, and I thought it'd be kind of cool to show a little bit of a progression in the thought processes of the Soviets and the Russians, where we go back to World War I, and with the Bolsheviks and all that different stuff, during that era, Bolt action rifle like this, like the Mosin Dagon, was on par with almost all the other militaries of the world. They were all pretty much using as their standard infantry weapon a bolt action rifle with stripper clips and fives, or even with the Lee Enfield, they had 10. A stripper clip or a charger clip fed five round manually operated bolt action rifles, and they would um, basically be the backbone of the army. And then you have heavy machine guns and, you know, artillery and stuff that would. Uh, compose the other parts but for the average infantryman this is what most militaries were using is some form of this type of weapon and this was Russia's answer so the Mosin Nagant as you know it's a plenty accurate plenty robust cheap to make maybe not the best in every category but as a weapon to arm the masses it was like the 8k back in the day it is easy to make and um, and they're fine weapons well, going, let's say, towards uh, the Winter War with Finland, the Soviets had been working on some on some uh, some machine gun designs, and they and they'd been working around with it. But right about before they started fighting the Finns, they decided somebody up top decided that some machine guns were stupid, and that they didn't need some machine guns. Well, they learned it the hard way fighting the Finns when the Finns came out with the uh, Suomi in that first Winter War. And they walloped on the Russians for as many men as they had and as what the Russians should have been able to accomplish. And a lot of it can be seen as there were some factors to it, but a large factor was the Finns could hit the ground, come in quick, and hit them with a high rate of fire, a high capacity of fire, when most of the guys were running something like this. So coming out of the fight with the Finns, they decided that they really had to put their nose to the grindstone and figure out a cheap, easy to produce submachine gun and there was the PPD 40 but the one that really caught on was the PPSH 41 it was cheap to produce it didn't take very skilled labor to do it it's kind of thick heavy gauge but bent sheet uh, sheets of metal there's no uh, real f uh, milling on on the majority of these guns and they could put out millions of them and what a lot of people do not realize is once they once World War II really started moving People want to talk about how the Germans kind of pioneered this idea of a assault weapon. And yes, they have the SCG-44, and as we know it today, that is the quintessential assault weapon, kind of like the first real widely fielded assault weapon. But the this was pretty much the, the assault rifle of the Soviets. House, house fighting in Stalingrad. All of the bitter fighting all across Eastern Europe into Germany. This was the backbone of that close quarters fighting, and they used it in more of an assault rifle role. 
as much as it is possible. So they made millions of them. They put millions of them out. And this was basically the assault rifle or assault weapon of the Soviets. Now, hopefully soon, I'm planning on getting a PPS-43 to do a build on. And we can talk a little bit about that, but that ended up becoming the cheaper alternative to this weapon and possibly a better weapon altogether. But for the most part, these never went away. And even going into the Korean War, you know, 10 years later or less with the Americans in the Korean uh, Peninsula, you hear American GIs being afraid of the burp gun, as, well, as they called it. It was Korean and Chinese soldiers running PPSH 41s. And these could really put some hurt on, on GIs if they, if they were deployed up close. So even this weapon comes up, in, and even in like Afghanistan today, you'll still see them. These weapons have not really went away because they are simple to use, simple to train on, as most Soviet stuff is. The Mosnagon's simple to use, the PPSH and the PPS-43, simple to use, and the AK is simple to use. So that's kind of a trend of the Soviet design. So this is what the Soviets were running. Now, in World War II, they figured out that these drums, though high capacity, because this has a high rate of fire, were not very reliable. If you found one that worked well in your PPSH, you kept it because it was kind of hard to make them in quick quantity because there was differences of tolerances with this, and also there were some differences in tolerances with your Magwell, and they end up having a lot of issues with it. So you see, as the war progressed, a lot more stick mags. And the stick mag really is a, a more reliable form of feeding for this, um, for this little submachine gun. Yeah, you get half the capacity, basically, but it shoots when, when you need it to shoot, and you start seeing a lot more soldiers running these stick mags as the war progressed, and even the PPS-43 I mean, it's a way better magazine than this is. You know, uh, I think it's double feed, but or um, yeah, I believe it is double feed. But um, they didn't even go to go to drums with those. So you see, as the war progressed, you see a lot more sticks, and even the Germans use these quite a bit too. They even had a conversion that they would put um, MP40 mags in. But you see a lot of so of of Fairmont in Russia with these you know slung over their necks, doing stuff over on the Eastern Front. So they were everywhere, the ammunition was everywhere. And uh, that's pretty much how they were running their army. Well, coming out of World War II, the Soviets had seen the stuff that the Germans were accomplishing and this was really the new, uh, the new age, this was the future. They ended up with Kalashnikov, came out with the AK, you know, it's probably more assault rifles of this type have ever have been made across the world. This is really the quintessential weapon of the 21st century and, and the later half of the 20th century. The neat thing is, is there's a lot of similarities to, of this to the PPSH. Note the charging handle on the same side. Simple to use controls. Very similar sights. The sight sighting system is very similar. I think people forget that, that the sighting system is very similar. And the idea was to have AKs replace the PPS-43s and the PPSH-41s and then also have some form of, whether it be SKS or another form of main rifle. Well, they figured out pretty quick that this AK filled both roles. And we really seen this weapon meet the Western world in Vietnam and um, the rest is history. But it's actually very similar in thought process and in design and in manual of arms than a PPSH-41. Uh, also, a little note here, I know it's a little taller, but it's funny that this is legal, legal length barrel. This would be a illegal length barrel. Even if I matched it, it would be illegal because the action is, is a little longer on this and shorter on that. But it is kind of funny when you stand them up at the side, it's like, this gun to be legal is gonna have to have a barrel sticking all the way out, and this one's just fine. But it's kind of similar. They're similar size. They're similar weights. Yeah, the PPSH is pretty heavy. So is the AK. But there is some lineage there that I don't think people see all the time. There, there was, there's some, there's some, some lineage at least in the, uh, in at least the handling and stuff of them. So, like I said, this is going to be 
Um, probably in the next video that, that you see of it, shooting. I'm guessing there's going to be a period that I'm going to have to work with it and get it to run reliably. But, like I said, a barrel's coming. And pretty much the next, next step is see if it works and then finish it, you know. Also, if you guys have any recommendations of what to finish the, um, the actual parts in it, Oxflow Blue, Oil Blackening, let me know. I want it to look right. But um, actually, before we go, I have one question because I know that there's a good, a good community out here and it's with these drums. So this drum, in fact, let me unscrew this real quick so I can show you. This is the drum that fits my PPSH the best. And I can show you guys what I, I kind of led into earlier about not all drums work. So how you would do this is you would get it cranked up to get ready get some tension on it oh see it slipped so now I got no tension my question is is why and how do I fix this drum because right about where I start to get some tension it slips again so it's like the spring is not catching whether that spring be broken if you guys have any insight let me know but um, that's kind of the problem that I'm having with this particular drum because um, at a certain point, it's kind of like, you know, what do I do with it? Because as you can see, I can get some tension on it, but to load a full mag, the spring is having some issues. So let's see if the community can give me any insight into why this is happening. Because I would like to use this drum. As you can see, it has some neat markings on the inside. And I like the, the kind of rustic, almost, you know, hard used finish of this one over my other drum. I can tighten this up better on the way because I'm just going to show some stuff. But see, it's kind of got this rough look. But um, like I was saying, so this drum fits perfect. The problem is with some of these drums is let's say with this drum, this, this spring seems to work fine on this one. It's kind of a bear to get in there. Let me see if I can co coerce it to fit. Okay, there we go. But then once it's in there, it's just a wobbly mess. And, I mean, it really does not want to stay in there. Where, of course, this one has the, the spring that seems to be working fine. Where this one, not only does it go in easy, it is rock solid. It's perfect for this Megwell. So that's gonna be um, maybe another part of the build I'm gonna have to figure out. But maybe the community knows. Um, another kind of interesting thing, you know, the, the, uh, the AK also has drums. So, you know, you can kind of have a, a uh, kind of a uh, PPSH almost look alike there. Very cool. So anyways, guys, probably just leave it there this is kind of more of an update and just kind of a quick look at what is coming down the chute so let's see if I can get this on me very tactical okay guys until next time I've been Ivan and we'll catch you on Forest Firearms